Well, here we go. I think before we get started, we ought to do a little uh, chair dancing. Something I came up with this morning is a pretty good idea. Since this, uh, it's going to be aimed directly at the baby boomers because we are not quite done yet. I think it might do us a little good if we get a little limbered up. So bear with me briefly. I'll be back as soon as this is over. The song. It's something I just figured out a couple of days ago. It took me six months to figure out who did this. It's one of those songs that when you hear it the first time, you know it's sensational, but then you can't figure out who it is. Well, let's chair dance a little bit and get limbered up.
Okay, now down to business. As I said, this is for the boomers. We're not finished yet. This is going to be the general theme of all of these. I don't really want to call them lectures, so let's call them lessons. books. So 
Well, I answered a question that she wanted to really know. I said, yes, I read them all. And she just walked away just thinking of being all smug. So I think she had just thought that she exposed the fraud. But here's a little of my history. Probably wondering who I am. I'll tell you this much. I have a bachelor's degree in mathematics. Uh, most, of, most of my master's work in mathematics was completed. But then good old President Nixon decided to cancel the uh, program that I was in. And I could not complete my master's work. So that's where I am as far as that's concerned. Now, as far as who I am, it's obvious that I don't want to be known right now. But we'll get to that as we go along. Uh, why should you listen to me? No particular reason. I'm nobody special. I'm just like you. I'm the guy next door, the guy that lives down the block. Uh, just average citizen. But I can no longer sit here in good conscience and do nothing while I see this country going not in a way that I would consider positive. So let's get to today's lesson. The first problem, as I see it, that we face is not the obvious one, global warming. That, of course, is, uh, should be our biggest concern right now. But the biggest problem that we have that we can correct immediately is Congress. This quote I'm going to show you now is from James A. Garfield. He was the 20th president. Let me see if I can get this tuned in here. Not too good at this, huh? Not too bad. This quote is from 1881. Let me read it to you. The people are responsible for the character of their Congress. If that body be ignorant, reckless, and corrupt, it is because the people tolerate ignorance, recklessness, and corruption. James A. Garfield, 20th President of the United States. And the message here is pretty clear. We are a Congress that is a do-nothing Congress. Most of them are busy now stuffing their pockets with money. Now, why do I say that? <clears throat> A few years back, our Supreme Court, in their infinite stupidity, decided in a case called Citizens United that corporations are people. Now what that did was, the effect that it had, was that it put our Congress up for sale, and this is why. 
if corporations are people, they can now contribute a certain amount of money. I think it's $2,800 now uh, per shareholder uh, to a congressional a congressman's war chest or their re-election campaigns. And what it did was, with all the lobbyists in Congress in Washington, D.C., there is so much money flowing into our congressmen's pockets that they, can, they no longer represent us. They represent the people that pay them. And that are these huge corporations that give them millions and millions of dollars. Now, let me uh, give you another example. When the Supreme Court announced their decision in Citizens United, two of the big guys in uh, oil and gas, the Koch brothers, one has since passed on, but the other one I assume is still alive. Their announcement at the time was that they were going to spend $400 million to get legislation enacted, enacted that was favorable to the oil and gas industry. Right now, we are actually exporting oil from this country, 80 million gallons, barrels, excuse me, barrels, a day, exporting. And what causes global warming? Burning fossil fuels, which is what oil is, and coal and gas and probably some others there too. But <laughs> not only do we not need to be exporting only oil and gas, we need to be decreasing the amount that we use. So why have we not gone to the very obvious simple big solution and that is to replace all our gasoline vehicles with electric cars that would certainly take care of all of our global warming problems at least decrease them substantially to where we can get to a point where we are no longer a threat to ourselves. We are no longer a threat to destroy our planet. All you have to do is look at Venus, our next door neighbor, and see where they are now. They're one huge cloud of sulfuric acid caused by global warming. Well, the reason we haven't done anything is because of the oil and gas industry lobbying Congress not to do anything. So they can continue making their oil and gas money. Detroit's happy, happy to be complicit in this and keep making vehicles with gasoline engines. We are always going to need a certain amount of gasoline and oil but not nearly to the level that we have now. Our emergency vehicles, I think, will always have to be gasoline. Uh, military vehicles will probably always have to be gasoline. But just our little commute vehicle, which is mostly what we drive all the time, is just back and forth to work and to the local here and there to do our little errands. But if we just used electronic vehicles for those, or electric vehicles, 
that would certainly substantially or, uh, or certainly decrease the amount of junk we're putting into the air. So that's going to be a number one priority. We need to get as many electric vehicles on the road as we can as quickly as we can. Now, back to Congress. Congress has been acting like two little bullies in elementary school fighting over the free will. They don't really get anything done. They just sit there and call each other names. Well, you're this and you're that and you didn't do this and you didn't do that. And that's what they're doing right now. Calling each other names and they get nothing done that benefits the American people. Because we're not paying them the way the lobbyists are. Can we fix that? Yes, we can. And it's coming up in November. And that is, we need to get Congress's attention. And tell them in no uncertain terms, what you're doing is unacceptable. And you refuse to listen to us, to listen to our wants and needs. So we need to get rid of them. Now, every, every two years is a third, roughly, of uh, our senators and uh, representatives come up for re-election. We need to get rid of every incumbent there is that we know already is incompetent. Now, I believe we've got some really good people because of the fact that they recognize what Congress is doing and they can't in good conscience serve anymore and get nothing done. I think mean, Paul Ryan is one of those people. I think he left uh, government because he was frustrated. I think Paul Ryan is a decent human being and a good congressman. Now, I'm not a Republican or a Democrat. He was a Republican, but I believe that's one reason he left. Possibly Boehner, too. I'm not real sure about him, but... We need to identify the do-nothings and get rid of them. You've heard, I'm sure, the saying, um, drain the swamp. Well, what that means is get rid of the congressmen that aren't benefiting us. Get their attention. They work for us. We don't work for them. We send them there to do our bidding and... For quite a while now, they have not been doing our bidding. They've been doing their own bidding and stuff in their pockets in the meantime. So, we can fix this. And it's not going to be all that difficult to do it. It'll take actually six years to pretty much replace them all. Because of their terms and... Uh, when they come up for re-election, I think it'll take six years. I may be mistaken. I may not be. I'm not, not real positive. Uh, but we can do it. And that is our biggest priority right now. Cleaning up Congress and getting them back to work for us. Okay, well, that's pretty much all I have for today. Um, this has been Lesson 1. Congress, and uh, there's going to be a series of these, about every two or three days I'll post another one, and uh, see if we can't straighten out some of the problems we've got. And once again, here's our general theme. Progress. Let's go 
back and fix the stuff we need to and then we'll take care of business. I think that's about it for today. So tune in in a couple of days and I'll be back with another lesson. Like Taylor says, ta-ta for now.